Ladies and gents, sometimes it's hard to admit, but yeah, yesterday I was wrong. In my video about the anonymizer and just reacting to, to Wargaming's video, I, I came to some very rushed conclusions. My opinion was borderline individualistic, flawed, and frankly my quality control on the video was really not up to par. As many of you know, I've been making daily YouTube videos for the last three weeks and I plan to do so for the rest of the year, but that must never come at the expense of having just some time to have a, a holistic opinion. Yesterday, I really missed the mark. I'll be honest, I, I, I bashed out that video in probably about 30 minutes. I, I reacted to Wargaming's video and I gave an opinion which could have only been formed as reactionary and when you first react to something you only have time to be able to consider the implications for yourself which is why in retrospect yeah, that video was certainly egotistical I didn't stop to take the time con to, to consider the impact that will, it will have on players that were not in my position and so consequently while I still stand by most of what I said yesterday you only really got half of the opinion and over the last 24 hours. I've been really having a good think about it. I've been reading all of your comments across all manners of platforms. It's always very interesting that I can release thousands of YouTube videos on this channel, but of course, it's the one where you kind of drop the mark a little bit that everybody wants to dive on, but I totally understand. I need to be held accountable, and this is why I am I'm sitting down. I was going to say I'm going to stand up, but I'm sitting down for this video, and I'm going to hopefully um and I'll definitely change my overall conclusion about the anonymizer. So firstly, I want to address people being incredibly tired of people drowning themselves in World of Tanks at the start of the battle. I totally agree. There's, there's no defending it. People use XVM to see when their team is statistically inexperienced. They see the enemy team. They think the enemy team is insurmountable. And so they want to drown themselves or they just get themselves killed as quickly as possible so that they can go and play another tank. This is deplorable. It's it's the lowest of the low. I, I, I just can't get myself into the mentality of a player who would look at that situation and not want to try harder, but just give up entirely. But just because I don't understand the player's position doesn't mean that the player who drowns themselves doesn't ruin the game for everybody else on their team. Now, I was really thinking about why I don't actually see this happen very often. And I came to the realization in the last 24 hours that, of course, if my statistics look impressive, then maybe the kind of player who was wanting to drown themselves wouldn't have because they saw that I'm on their team. This is why I, I just thought that it is not a significant issue because I've probably only seen it happen maybe in one in hundreds of battles or maybe in one in a thousand battles I'll see a player do that. But now I realize that if you're a casual player or an inexperienced player, or even if you sign up in a platoon with other players as well, it's going to be very much more likely that that player will be thinking about drowning themselves if they see a statistically weak player on their team. And so when you think about it, this problem is not really going to be experienced by by the unicorns as much as it is going to be experienced by the tomatoes, the happy strawberries, whatever you want to be calling them, the casual players, right? And so I, I didn't stop yesterday to think that maybe one of the reasons why I'm not seeing this happen is because the players aren't drowning themselves because I've got them on their on their team. Um, I, I really hope I'm getting this across without sounding even more egotistical. It's really hard to talk about statistics and this whole this whole purpose without being in the position that I am. I'm trying to fully admit that maybe this is more of a problem than I think it is because I've, I've just not been able to experience it from the other side. Next, I want to talk about people being bullied and fed up of being bullied inside World of Tanks. Now, while I, I still stand by half of what I said yesterday, I, I, I presented it in a very brash way. I don't like the idea that there have to be filters implemented by companies to try and protect us from social interactions online. I really think it's important that we still can deal with it ourselves. Even though sometimes it's nice to not have to, just a click and a click to be able to remove that uh, that player's ability to be able to, to, to bully you. I, I feel like everybody should really be taught that or sh everybody should to, to demonstrate that and to really know that, that people who are bullying you or people who are just wasting your time on the internet are literally just that 
And what you need to do is you need to do everything that you can to realize that unfortunately you are very much outnumbered by idiots online and just to block them as quickly as you can and to stop them affecting your mentality and to stop them just wasting your time. And while I realize that maybe I can be very cold and I can be very, I, I get a lot of abuse, as you might expect. And so maybe over the last seven years, I've realized that, oh, it's very easy to just block people, oh, another person to block. But I've put myself in this position. I have put myself in this position by creating content and being passionate about a game that I love. And that's not normal, I guess. Well, no, it is very normal to be passionate about a game that you love. But my point is, is that not everybody's trying to make videos about the game. They just want to play the game and experience it. And so are they going to get as much abuse to be able to then develop the kind of coping mechanism to just handle it? Not really. And with regards to the, the kind of abuse that people receive inside World of Tanks, I can imagine it's, 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 it's dramatic. And again, for the same reasons as to why a lot of players won't be drowning themselves when they see that I'm on their team, a lot of players won't be using the the same kind of abuse towards me. Although I, I get different kinds of abuse. But again, I've put myself in this position it's part of the it's part of the experience, so to say, and it's definitely something that that I should have to deal with. Just to share an experience that I had when I was on the other side of the uh, <laughs> the I was getting the other end of the stick, so to say, was I was playing World of Warcraft recently, and I was in um, Scarlet Monastery dungeon with my with my buddies, and we had this Ukrainian gentleman gentlemen that might be stretching a little bit join our party, and um, I was tanking. I was playing a tank, and this Ukrainian guy halfway through the dungeon left and his parting message was this tank is useless go uninstall and I was like oh okay and all my friends were laughing about it for ages because I, I know deep down that I can I can play games okay and I don't have any insecurities and I'm I'm confident so I just brushed it aside and we laughed about it but that was kind of like a once in a couple of month kind of affair I can imagine if, if that was happening every single day I mean I still think about it now if that was happening every single day, if I was just a casual player, side world of tanks, logs on at the end of the day, just wants to relax, then that must be literally soul destroying. I, don't know. I didn't, I, I didn't put myself in that position, and so I realized that the anonymizer could significantly help that. And while I, I still stand by that feeling that I that I have that it's it's up to you to defend yourself and I, I, I don't feel like it should be up to society or up to companies to protect you from other people. I still think that you can just block them and, and learn to ignore them. I also think that the anonymizer might help for people out there who who just have the social awkwardness to not do the blocking in the first place. Next up, I want to talk about XVM Focus inside World of Tanks. XVM Focus is where the enemy team will see that you're a statistically significant player and they're going to focus you again and again and again. And because there's artillery inside World of Tanks, which allows people to shoot you indirectly, it's impossible to defend yourself in some situations on some maps in some tanks against artillery. Um, one thing that I've realized in the last 24 hours is that I've effectively developed a coping mechanism for this XVM focus because with all due respect I've 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 been a unicorn whatever a statistically significant player right from the get go as I did play the beta and when I came into the game I was effectively kind of re-rolling in the release because I played it a little bit in the beta right so I've had every advantage from the beginning I know that because I've been focused so much because of the fame that I've gained for me I'm just still a potato talking about a game that they love in their pajamas that fame from the internet that now inside world of tanks a lot of people will as wargaming said trophy hunt me hmm, yeah understandable right and that over the last seven years of that happening i've become very adept at dealing with it i can handle the extra pressure but a key realization that i've had and I, a lot of you have been pointing out and quite rightly so in comments either on my youtube channel or just all the way across the internet it feels like that I've chosen to put myself in this situation. And so the coping mechanism that I've, I've developed for it based on my fame and based on the XVM focus, nobody should have to deal with it, right? Just because I've been able to deal with it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that, that you should have to deal with it. And furthermore, while I'm definitely not the best player in World of Tanks, I, I feel like I can handle myself all right. And I didn't really stop to consider that at least for me, that 
when somebody's focusing me, when somebody's trophy hunting me, whatever they want to do inside the game, they're just coming at me and playing aggressively because either they see me on XVM or they, they just see my name and they want to try and take a swing at me. But because I'm an experienced player and because I've got so used and adept to handling that pressure over the last seven years, I can quite often either outplay the player or I can lull them into a position because I, I can see it happening and end up making them look um, really stupid in the process, which is immensely rewarding. Sometimes I can't, sometimes they just come at me and they kill me. Escape, exit battle, play another tank. I'm sure the other player has a good chuckle, whatever. But look, what I really didn't consider yesterday is how brutal it must be for a casual player to be constantly focused by experienced players on the enemy team who want to use XVM to literally just target them for an easy kill. When people are playing for marks of excellence, or even when players are just playing for experience, credits, everything, if they get an opportunity to either do 1,500 damage to a, a very inexperienced player uh, compared to doing 1,500 damage against a, a unicorn who's going to be able to take significant chunks of their hit points away, it's a bit of a no-brainer as to what you're going to do. And so it's really without a shadow of a doubt that I did not consider these aspects in my video yesterday that was rushed. I didn't really put myself in, in the, the shoes of the players. I honestly thought, I mean, ignorantly at the time, that this was Wargaming were applying this for the 1%, right? I either thought they were applying it for the, the unicorns that are focused by XVM at the top, or even the very, very bottom 1% who are completely harassed all the time. And I didn't really consider that it's actually for the entire spectrum of players who really feel that they're just being scrutinized and chastised against their will inside the game. And so to have the anonymizer will definitely be a great thing for players who want to forego their nickname inside World of Tanks, at least in the battle, to be able to gain that extra layer of concealment, so to say. So now that I understand the, the point of view of the, the people who want to have the anonymizer in the game so much, I also want to highlight three of the things that I, I truly feel that the game will be worse off for if all of the statistics are removed from it. Firstly, I feel that if you can't have a real-time display of player experience inside the game, then it's going to be much harder to learn what works and what doesn't. Because, of course, without individually inspecting all of the players in the post-game stats to see their win rates, you're going to have no idea of how balanced the game was skill-wise between the two teams. I love to use the statistics inside XVM to try and figure out of uh, did a position work because my team were really strong and the enemy team was really weak or, or or did this position work because the game was balanced and it enabled me to have the impact that I needed to to make the difference and carry the game. Alternatively, going into the same position when the enemy team is ridiculously experienced and your team are, are very casual that same position might not work. I don't want to use XVM to tell me which positions to go into. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm, what I'm trying to highlight is that by knowing how balanced the, the matchup is skill-wise, you can use that to quickly assess about which positions are strong and which positions are weak. It's also a great tool for noticing when there are really skilled players on your team and to see what positions they go into, and then maybe you can try them out later. The next thing I'd like to highlight is that without the knowledge of whether you are the favorite or the underdog, I really feel that the games are going to feel more similar. For me personally, at least, it's really exciting to, to know when you won the battle with the less experienced team. And on the other hand, it's, it's really consoling when you got absolutely smashed because of the fact that the enemy team was so much more skilled than your team was and not because of your lack of impact in the battle. Now, please, again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that XVM predicts whether your battle is going to be won and lost. What I'm suggesting is it suggests how much of an impact that you have to have in it to be able to carry the game. And for me, it's, it's much more worthwhile to highlight a game on YouTube when there's a player who's won with a bunch of happy little strawberries against some angry unicorns on the enemy team than there is where just a, a completely super imbalanced game where one team completely rolls over the others. A lot like you saw in the 1-2-1 the replay on this channel a 
couple of days ago. Thirdly, for me, it's it's really fun to look at each individual game as a puzzle. Maybe you notice that your, your tank destroyers are inexperienced. Well, if you're in a light tank or a medium tank, or even in a fast heavy, then try and get to the front and try and provide them with a little bit of extra spotting, and you can still make them useful. Alternatively, you might notice that there's a top tier platoon of very experienced medium tank players who are completely mismatched against your top tier platoon, and you might be able to go out of your way to give them that extra little bit of help to be able to, to change the outcome of the battle. While, in my opinion, losing these features will, will make the game worse, at, at least for me. I'd really like to thank the community for being so vocal, both on the comments of my own YouTube channel and also all across the internet, because at least now I have a better understanding of the views of all of the people who have been campaigning for the anonymizer for up for years now. As just like it did last year when I took a step back from my pay to win account and I was I started up a new plays for free account. Sometimes it, it does take something dramatic to be able to to really make you realize that you're being very ignorant and you're not viewing the whole picture from the other side. And so I will fully admit that yesterday uh, I I was wrong. And while personally I still think that statistics should be freely available inside the game. I'm fully willing to admit that the anonymizer is probably a good feature inside World of Tanks, as it's going to allow all of the groups of players that I've highlighted and I've had a good time to think about over the last 24 hours to enjoy the game more than ever. And you know what? Maybe I should be a little bit happy about it as well. Because all of that coping mechanism that I've developed over the last seven years, <laughs> now I'm going to get to finally relax a little bit. So that's it. That's me chipping in for the second time now that I've really had a chance to, to consider the situation more holistically. I'm not going to remove yesterday's video. I'm not going to unlist it or anything. Just hopefully everybody understands a little bit more about why I was so reactionary and why the, the small amount of time that I had uh, and the fact and the fact that it was reactionary led to me just not really consider uh, considering the bigger picture and definitely being egotistical but on the other hand I, I really hope that all the people who who want the anonymizer to happen also consider the loss that all the players who have been quite happily using statistics not to victimize not to berate people but just to enrich their world of tanks experience